I would like to make a bet with you guys that if you guys were looking for a bicycle in that COVID pandemic period of March 2020 to December or past, that if you went to a bicycle store to go buy a bicycle for you or your significant other or family member, they did not have any inventory. Or if they had inventory, it was an odd size or a different bicycle. It was probably not the one you're looking for. Or in our case, we only had $12,000 bicycles. Um, it's not because of the fact that your store didn't have inventory. It's not because of the fact that uh, they were picking on you and holding out inventory for you. It was just a case of that whole factory being shut down overseas. Uh, bicycles becoming so popular during the pandemic because everyone was going outside and all gyms and other fitness areas were closed. And it was an absolute insane experience. Uh, never seen anything like it within my work time of working in the bicycle store for 12 years. Uh, it, it was just mind boggling. So this is my story about what happened. I'm gonna take you guys through about the March time experience and from on there. So uh, let's, let's get into it. So starting in March, the country got shut down. Um, we were discussing whether or not we should shut down the store as well because we had so much inventory here. People were not coming in because of the, the shock of, of families getting furloughed, people getting let go of their job, people going on unemployment. Um, and we were discussing that as well. Uh, no one was really buying bikes because everything was so unsure. Well, then all these places got shut down, schools got closed, people were sent at home, and then bicycles were still deemed a essential business because of the fact that they're a means of transportation for some people to get to work. Um, all of a sudden, I think within the final week of us deciding of, of whether or not to close down, uh, we just had a, a huge day where people were walking in through the door, or it, at the time, I think we were doing curbside, so we all had masks on, we had hand sanitizers everywhere, we had toilet paper was impossible to get at that time, so we were buying stuff on eBay and just trying to stock it for us here at the store, but I think we had a walk-in and we had like a $15,000 day, which was mind-blowing. We haven't had a walk-in like that of just like organic business of just walk-ins because families were coming over with their kids, their spouses and stuff like that, wanting to buy bicycles to do something outside during this time. Uh, when I tell you that, I, like I said, I've never seen it where people were literally standing at that doorstep and pointing like, like oh, like on the tippy toes, like, what's that one? Okay, that, yeah, that one, I'll take that one, the green one, and that one. And just, and then uh, ring it up, take my card and just bring it to the register and, and meet me outside. like. Because, again, I didn't want to come in contact with them. They didn't want to come in contact with me. We didn't know what was going on. And the sales would happen, and then they would either take it or they would ask for delivery. It was, it was to a point where we had a warehouse, I want to say, you know, five, ten minutes down the road from us that we can go get uh, bikes. Old years, 2017, 2015, 2016 model bikes, that we were blowing those things out and just getting whatever kind of inventory we get. Um, accessories were being sold with it, locks we ran out of during that time, we ran out of uh, shoes, we ran out of bar tape, we ran out of helmets for a long time. We couldn't, people were buying bikes like, okay, what kind of helmets do we have? We didn't have any helmets. Um, Pater. We didn't have any helmets. Uh, <laughs> we ran out of helmets, we ran out of pumps, we ran out of tires, we ran out of tubes at one point. Um, it was just a, a, such a, a phenomenon that we, we di didn't know what to do. We, we didn't know how to sell stuff. We didn't, we, we, there was no selling. It was just people pointing at it and buying it. Um, but all these rows of bikes, this was not here. I think around June, July, uh, Specialized took it from us being able to order bikes to saying that they're on back order or sold out, which I made a video about. And then after that, it went from being back order sold out to oversold items. So what was happening is that every single store is selling out of the inventory. They're ordering more inventory to get for their bikes and all the reps were saying the same thing you got to buy this stuff because you got to put this on order because you're never going to be able to get this stuff back in stock it's we're about six seven months out i'm sure everyone's heard this line if they were looking to buy a bike during that time they were told it's going to be next year 2021 2022 um, it's going to be six or seven months which no one wanted to hear but our reps were saying the same thing to us so we literally had a bicycle store uh completely empty we had a bunch of consumers who wanted to buy product. We were never price gouging. We were never raising the price of what retail was. We were just not discounting any items or before we're like, hey, if there's a bike store down the street and you want to buy this bicycle, and they're like, well, what, what can you do that the other store won't do? Oh, we'll give you a, you know, a free lock or something like that. There was no more of that. It was just more of, give me that bike. I want to get out of the store. I want to be back in my house and I want to be safe again. So uh, bicycles, we can no longer order with our distributors. We can no longer order kids' bikes were impossible to find. I think SE bikes were flying off the shelf as well. We never sold SE bikes, but I had, I want to say over a hundred calls of, of SE bikes going on, asking me where I can get them from. We had to bring in another line called Retrospec, which is a, a cheaper bike to, for a more affordable bike, 
because of the fact that we couldn't get our normal brands, so we had to bring in these lines as well to accommodate consumers. Uh, repairs were by far the most craziest time. Our normal turnaround time for repairs is about a, a day to three days, depending on what kind of uh, service work there is or what kind of backup there is. This is kind of what our normal repair room looks like. We kind of have it under wraps. We are a bigger store. We usually have six or seven people uh, in the back room working on bikes or repairs. Uh, so we do have a big employee staff here. Uh, at that time, we were getting at two weeks because of the fact that we had so many repairs coming in from people who had bikes in sheds that were like, oh, I can't find a bike. But in my shed, I have this rusty bike that's just completely destroyed and uh, they'll fix it up for free. Keep in mind, I couldn't get tires. I couldn't get chains. I couldn't get cassettes. I still can't get a lot of stuff. They wanted this stuff done the next day. I'm telling them two weeks, they're getting mad at me. And I literally have customers coming in here pointing at bikes to try and buy. Uh, I, I understand that it was just a, a very cluster mess for everyone. But uh, me working in this industry for that long, and uh, I've never seen it. And we're still recovering from this point. Um, what I mean by that is that it's very hard for us to still get bikes in. As you can see, I have some here like a Scott Mountain Bike. This was a very popular bike to buy in a mid-range $500 to $700 bike. Mountain bike parks were open here in South Florida, uh, which were able for people to ride. But you couldn't. we didn't have a $500 to $700 range of mountain bikes for people to buy before during that time. The time when we needed them there, they were not there. The only options we had were the $4,000 models, the $6,000 models, the $8,000 models. And people were always asking me, why this? Why that? The reason for it was that the people who usually typically buy the Walmart consumer bike for $100 to $300, there was nothing left at Walmart, Target, or Kmart. So they would come to our store to buy these $600 tiers. So then the person who usually buy the $600 tier from us, the $600 to $800 bike, well, they're like, okay, screw it. I'll buy the $1,000 tier and so on and so forth. I have people that I would never even, I'm like, hey, this is the only bike I have in the store. It's $4,000. They, they would see the store. They're like, okay, yeah, there's nothing here. Okay, um, yeah, I'll just, I'll take this one. I don't, I don't even like the color. I'll just take it. And, and that's how it was. It wasn't even selling. It wasn't even uh, negotiating. It wasn't, hey, what kind of terms there is. It was just people wanted to get out on their bikes and kind of ride, which is, in my mind, really cool because of the fact that, one, it's kind of revamping the industry. It's getting people who weren't that happy about bikes back on the bikes. It's people spending quality time with their families, bringing people together at a time of need where they might have needed it, you know, to get out, to get some mental health, to get some physical health. Um, and it was... It was great. I mean, I, I never saw it. And hopefully it got our name brought back onto the map for people who didn't know about us for repairs, for people who are buying bikes that didn't know even our store existed. I, I heard that so many times. I've drove down here for 10, 15 years and I never even know this is a bike store. Um, but then it got to the craziness, I think, I want to say August, September, October, November. Those kind of holiday months where, where Christmas time was coming up. We had a line, so we, we started doing curbside again because I think like a second wave or some kind of thing was happening again. We have doing curbside again. So no customers were allowed in the store because there was supposed to be only 10 allowed at the time. That was getting broken all the time because of the freaking fact of people just didn't listen. They were showing up without masks still, and we are telling them, get out of our store. You can't be in here without a mask on because it's just what the rules are from the state. All right, it, not, just, just, just the fact that people were getting angry at us because of the fact that we were trying to enforce the rules that the, the state or the government was telling us to and people get mad at us for it, but they didn't understand that if we don't enforce those laws, then our store gets closed out and then I can't make any money to feed my family. So they were getting mad, but I literally had a line of people. I want to say from here, I'd open up this door. And then, okay, there's a lot of rain. I want to say all the way to where that second tree is, I want to say about 20 people waiting in the line to peep their head in here to get a bike. And like I said, it wasn't like, it wasn't like this before. There's probably like maybe on this side, like eight bikes over here. And you hear someone go, I want that bike, that bike, that bike, uh, that bike, that bike, that bike. And it'd be like four bikes. And you hear people in the back be like, is there any bikes left? Like it was almost like a, like a food stand before they closed or something like that. It was insanity. Um, but yeah, I mean, the whole thing happened. We got by it. Luckily no one here got COVID in the shop. Um, we're very fortunate for that. And you know, we just kept our mask on, kept on working. We're, you know, very fortunate to at least have work, to have jobs. It was crazy, but it was better than the alternative of not having a job. So very fortunate in that aspect. Um, we had a lot of people here, you know, just work together, kind of, you know, we, we ordered lunch together. We only worked kind of uh, shorter days. Our normal hours were like 11 and seven. We were only working 10 to five. They kind of just cut it, cut it down because of the craziness, but we were able to work together, bond together. 
um, you know, try to make it as enjoyable as possible. But it was working bell to bell of, of, of these bicycle sales. And like I said, we're very fortunate that we're working that and not in the ER room or something like that, but it was just insanity. Um, like I said, we're still feeling the effects of it. So the aftermath of it is, is that we're still feeling the effects of it. Usually on our, on our road bike section, as you guys can see over there, we have some top tier bikes, 7,000 to 12,000 plus. Um, but usually how it goes that we would have this, all these road bike shelves, these will all be full of like a Lays or a thousand dollar bikes. You can't find a thousand dollar road bike anymore. All these will be filled with $2,000 bikes, $3,000 bikes, $4,000 bikes. Now our only thing we have, we have one LA here for a size 56 for 1200 bucks. We have a 2018 Roubaix 56. And then just from there it goes to uh, 7,000, 7,000, 7,000, 7,000, 14,000, 55,000. Oh, sorry, 5,500, 5,200, 7,500. Uh, yes, so any kind of base model road bike, any kind of entry level mountain bike, any kind of any kind of just bike from 500 to 3 gram that was very popular for people to get into was impossible to get. So we're still feeling the effects of it. They're still all oversold items. We finally got pumps back in stock. We finally got locks back in stock. And now what the aftermath is, as you guessed it, when all these companies were telling us during the midst of that pandemic, hey, put these on order, get them on a back order, we'll ship them as soon as we get them. When we needed them, they weren't there. But now all this stuff is starting to show up in boatloads of inventory. Um, helmets by by the helmets by the dozen. Uh, we were like I said, we ran out of helmets. Now we have helmets for days, and you know it's good that that life's getting back to the normal and, and people are starting to kind of uh, be able to 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 live again. But all of this inventory that we have now are just coming in by the boatloads. So. It's, it's, been a, it's been a weird way to cope with it, whereas normally we'd put it in a preseason order and for this inventory or these items or these bicycles, and we kind of have an idea from last year, hey, we did X amount of dollars this year, we're planning to do this or maybe like a 5% increase, whatever that is, and we ordered off that. We have no way to plan for this year. We have no way of, <laughs> we can't base our last year's numbers off this year's numbers because it was just a phenomenon that happened, like I said. And uh, yeah, so now that's what we're into. So. Uh, yeah, I just figured I'd share this with you guys, let you guys into a little bit of my world. Like I said, I cannot be more fortunate to be able to have worked through that whole time um, because if I if I didn't have a job, you know, it's that's uh, I mean I'm the main provider for the family, so it's it was a scary time. So I'm very fortunate and very thankful that I did have a job for that whole experience. Um, but I just kind of wanted to let you guys know, maybe you guys are trying to buy a bike, maybe you guys got in arguments with your local shop, maybe. People are telling you lies or saying, hey, we'll have this bike and it didn't come in. We're still dealing with back orders on bikes. Let's say that you bought a bike from us in June, July, August, and we told them November. I still have people's bikes I'm waiting for that they ordered in November that's, that's supposed to be here in January, and it's now April and it's still not here. Uh, these bikes you all see here, these all these rock hoppers and stuff, these were all ordered back in September and they're now showing up. These Scots, these were ordered at the beginning of 2020. I want to say March of the preseason order. Uh, we're just seeing these now. These are our first time seeing those bikes. So it's good to see bikes coming in, but now the bicycle industry has to catch up. Specialized Trek, Giant. I know they're trying to pump out the factories as quick as possible. Handlebars are a problem to get. All the hot items that, that are very popular in the cycling world, yes, they're hard to get because there's such a high demand. But things will level out. It'll go back to normal soon, or not soon. It's just hopefully soon, but we'll have product in hand. And uh, yeah, I just figured I'd share this, guys, with you. Um, and let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, I enjoy talking about this stuff. Like I said, it was a crazy time. And like I said, well, I'm just fortunate enough to work through it. But I figured I'd just share that experience with you guys and let you guys into a little bit of my world. But thank you guys again so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, uh, please tell me about it and leave a like on the video. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.